Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. If you are new here, my name is Anna and I make home baking content here on my channel every single week. In today's video, I'm going to take you through one of my favorite winter recipes. It's a delicious, hearty dish made of mashed garlicky beans served with a topped caramelized onion sauce. It can be enjoyed warm or even cold straight out of the fridge and if you are a meat lover you can serve it as a side dish along with grilled meats or roasts or if you are like me and love sausages guys i highly highly recommend you try it with some fresh pork sausage if you are not into meat you can definitely eat it as it is it would be really delicious with some homemade sourdough bread it is actually a staple in my country, especially during Lent since it doesn't have any dairy or meat. So I'm going to start by prepping my onions. Traditionally we use yellow onions in this recipe, so this is what I'm using today. But if you don't have yellow onions, just go ahead and use whatever onions you have on hand. Next, I'm going to boil my beans. I have a pound of dry white beans soaking overnight in the fridge and some filtered water mixed with about a quarter of a teaspoon of baking soda. Baking soda makes your beans more digestible and will also shorten the cooking time. So, discard all the water baking soda mixture and rinse your beans thoroughly under cool water. At this point, if there are any skins floating around, I usually try and remove as many as possible. This step, along with a soaking, reduces most of the anti-nutrients in the beans and it also makes them a lot creamier. I know that some of you might ask if you can use black beans or even red kidney beans and the answer is probably yes, but traditionally we use white beans in this recipe. So any type of white beans would be actually preferable, it doesn't really matter, grain northern beans tend to cook fastest and this is what I have today. Cannellini and butter beans are really good too, they would actually be my first choice in this recipe since they both have a very soft and creamy texture but somehow they are quite hard to find as dry beans in my local supermarkets. Um, Anyways, my advice is to use whatever white beans is available to you, but um, take into consideration that you might have to adjust the cooking time. My beans are ready to be boiled. I'm going to pressure cook them in my instant pot, but if you are not in a hurry, you can of course boil them on the stove top too. I'm going to cover them with about 6 cups of fresh water and make sure there is at least 2 inches of water above the beans and the pressure cooker is not more than half full. To the water, I'm adding some salt and pepper, and of course, guys, you can adjust the amount you are using. I'm just going by filling here, I would say about half a teaspoon of each, because I can always add more later if necessary. I'm going to flavor them with bay leaves and some onion too, and I will pressure cook everything on high heat for 25 minutes. While my beans are cooking, I'm going to fry my onions. As you can see, I'm using quite a lot because I really love the toppings. So for this amount of beans, I'm gonna need about two and a half to three large onions sliced in, I would say, relatively thin strips. Be careful if you cut them too thin, they will melt away in your sauce and this is not what we are going for. I'm using a large pan and cover the bottom of the pan with a generous amount of oil. You can use any neutral oil. I have here avocado oil because I ran out of tallow and lard and I'll be honest I do prefer animal fats over oils. Just keep in mind that whatever oil or fat you use you need quite a lot. The size of the pan matters too if you are using a too small pan or if you don't use 
enough fat or oils, the onions will actually sweat in their own juice instead of browning. So I'm using a large heavy bottom stainless steel pan because I find stainless steel gives me a better browning than cast iron, but a cast iron skillet is a good option too. Here I'm adding some salt and pepper and stirring frequently to avoid burning my onions. When they are soft and light brown in color, I turn my heat down to a low and add about a cup of good quality tomato sauce and half a cup of water. Everything needs to cook slowly till oil separates and you have a thick sauce. I know that some people may consider boiling your own dry beans a waste of time, but in my country this is how this dish is typically done. I guess you can use canned beans too. Just if you do so, I highly recommend you warm them up very well before blending them. This will ensure you have a creamy smooth paste, plus the heat will also infuse the garlic better. Because guys, let me tell you, this should be a pretty garlicky dish. Meanwhile, my beans are done cooking. I'm going for slightly overcooked beans here, so don't worry if they split a bit during cooking. This will actually result in a creamier paste once you blend it. I'm straining them, but I won't discard the liquid because I need some of it for the next step. It is also important to not let them cool completely because it might make your dish lumpy and chunky. My beans are still warm when I place them in my blender along with one cup of the remaining liquid. I'm also seasoning with some salt, pepper and six cloves of garlic. Guys, a quick warning here. Romanians love garlic, so if you're not into raw garlic, you can of course use less. But be aware that originally this dish should be quite garlicky, so just don't go to a date afterwards, okay? Or just use less. Blend until you have a silky smooth paste, runnier than mashed potatoes. It should not be soupy either. The consistency I like is something in between mashed potatoes and the creamy soup. Keep in mind that it will thicken up a bit as it cools down, so definitely do not make it too thick. This is a rustic type of meal, so there's no need to be fancy here. I'm going to just place it in a large bowl. My onions are also done. They are soft and have this really nice jammy consistency. I added a bit of sweet paprika at the end, which is totally optional. If you like spicy food, you may use hot paprika instead or some cayenne pepper would be really nice too in here. I'm adding a generous layer of sauce on top and it is basically ready to be served. haven't had this dish in quite some time, so my family has been very much enjoying it. Anyway, that's where I'm going to end today's video. I'm gonna leave the ingredients and exact quantities I used down below for you, just in case you need to check them again. Thank you very much for watching and I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. Bye!